One, introduction to quadratics. In grade 10, at some point, you're going to run into quadratics. Now, what are these things? First thing I want to actually mention, and it's something I didn't even know when I was in high school. So quadratics, the word quadratics comes from quadratum, and it's from Latin, and it means square. Now, if you think about a square, you will notice that a square has basically four sides. Now, this one, yeah, so here's a square. Now, quadratics in general just don't mean in terms of squares. They can be rectangles and any quadrilaterals. So quad, okay, meaning four, so four-sided. If you're going to be taking the area of a square, then you know that the area, so let's say if this side is x and then this side is x, well, the area of this particular square is going to be x times x, which is x squared. And this is the whole idea behind the quadratics, that when you're going to be dealing with polynomials, and in this case, the polynomials are a very special type. They are special because the highest order, so the order on the variable that you have, is basically a square, which, which again comes from Latin, which is quadratum. And that's the reason why we call these things quadratics. In general, any quadratics, so here's an example, what you have is you try to order, let's say your terms, you might have something like this. This is called the quadratics. Now it is an expression because there's no equal sign, so it has three terms. And notice that the highest order is basically the square or the two, and that's what makes this a quadratic. The other orders are going to be smaller. So notice the order on this x is just simply 1, and then there is no x on the 10. Now this is a polynomial with basically three terms. And this entire chapter on quadratics deals with these types of polynomials. And I'm going to give you an introduction to these quadratics and what you should keep in mind. And one thing that I hope you still remember from grade 9 is the distributive property when you're talking about polynomials of any kind. So it could be monomials, which is just one term, binomials, which is what you're going to be dealing with, quadratics and expanding them, and then factoring them out, and so on. So I'll put a link up above to the distributive property. If you haven't watched it or you have forgotten it from grade 9, you can watch that before you get into this. And if you understand the distributive property, then this lesson is going to be much, much simpler. Let us take a look at a few examples of these quadratics. And they're all, by the way, expressions. So again, there's no equal signs. You will run into some equalities eventually and probably some relations with these quadratics as well. Now, here I just want to present to you basically the distributive property. So how do you expand any of these types of binomials? So notice that what we have is the first example. So this is just x plus 1, and it is squared. So this is a binomial on its own because it's x plus 1, so it has two terms, and we're squaring it. So we're going to make it a quadratic throughout. Now, if you're going to be doing that for yourself, now when you get to the point where you understand these very well, you, of course, don't have to do this. But this is what the squared means. You're taking the term and you're squaring it two times. And by the distributive property now, if you want to be able to expand this entire thing, then what you do is you will take each term. So you'll start with the first term and you're going to be expanding it out. So you're going to be multiplying it by every term okay, that is on the opposite side there. So that first x is going to first multiply by this x, and then it's going to multiply by that x. That comes from the distributive property. And when you do that, you will get, so x times x is x squared. x plus x times 1 is just x. Now you're going to take the other term, which is the 1, and again, you're going to expand it through these two. And if you expand it, so now you're going to have, so this is going to multiply these. And if you do that, you're going to get x and then plus 1. Notice you can collect your like terms. 
So here are your two like terms, and that's also something that you should be aware of. If you've forgotten it, I'll put up a link above there for like terms from grade nine. And what you will have is now you're gonna have x squared plus two x plus one. This is just a quadratic. Notice the highest order is two, and you've expanded it out. So that's just a distributive property that you should probably remember from grade nine if you were taught this particular topic. And that is it in terms of this expansion. Now, think back of the squares. So what this is in terms of visually, what happens when you have these squares, then let me correct this. So what we have is, what this is saying is that we're taking, basically this is x plus one, so that's right here. Now we're squaring it, so we're, it's almost like we're taking the area and notice that that's what this is, right? Because we had x plus one times x plus one. So we don't know exactly what the side is, but we can certainly take the entire area of this if we multiply those. All right, so that's that first example. And then it's just expanded and it gives us this expression. Now our second example, so this one right here, which I'm going to bring down, we're going to expand this one as well. And you should get a gist after seeing this a few times and then recalling it from grade nine, how to expand these. So again, so to expand this out, so we're gonna do this. We're gonna be distributing it across. That will be x squared plus three x. Then we're gonna take the two, we're gonna expand that out. So that's gonna give us 2x plus six. We're gonna collect our like terms, which are the ones in the middle. So this is going to be plus five x plus six. And notice that these quadratics, when you are multiplying two binomials together, because of the fact that we are collecting the like terms right here, we pretty much have three terms at the end. And the highest order is always for us two. And we typically put the highest order of whatever term we have first, then the second one, and then the third one, which is just simply a constant. That would have been the second example. If you were looking at this from the viewpoint of these areas, and in this case, what you would have is now, now it's no longer necessarily just a square. It could be some quadrilateral. And what you have here is this is x plus two, and it is multiplying x plus three. So these sides aren't exactly equal and they're not per se squared anymore. But what makes it a quadratic is this exponent right here, which is your highest order that you have in your polynomial. In this case, okay, with uh, three terms. Let's take a look at another example because what I want you to start slowly seeing is that within these quadratics, these are kind of simple quadratics where the actual constant in front or the coefficient in front of the x here it wasn't a number it was just simply one so notice we had a one in front of this x one in front of this x one in front of this x but you don't always have a one in front of that x it could be something like this and does that change anything for us no i mean sure it makes things a little bit more complicated so if i paste this back in and i try to expand this you will notice that it's going to be a little bit tougher. This is what we have. So it's 2x first times 3x. So we have to multiply the coefficients together. So 2 times 3, it's going to be 6. And then the x and the x is just x squared. That's what we have there. The 2x times 5 is going to be plus 10x. Then we're going to move over and we're going to do the second term. So again, we're going to distribute across through there. That's going to be negative. 9x, and then it's going to be negative 15. These are our like terms that we have. And from the like terms, this will be 10 minus 9, which is simply just 1x, or simply x minus 15. And there is our quadratic expression that we have. And notice that the actual coefficient in front of the x squared is no longer 1, like it was in the previous two examples. Here, our coefficient is six. Now, in general, what you will find in school is that when you have these quadratics, 
people are going to, or teachers are going to tell you that it kind of looks like this. So there is a coefficient, which is in front of your x squared. There is a coefficient, they call that b, okay, in front of that x. And then finally, okay, there is a coefficient c. Now, of course, c can be negative, as you can see in this example, it's negative 15. And here the coefficients could be one or anything else. And that is your general quadratic. So ax squared plus bx plus c once you expand and you collect your like terms. And now any of those coefficients could possibly be zero, of course. So b could be zero, c could be zero. And of course, a could be zero as well, except if a is equal to zero, then you don't no longer really have a quadratic because then you're only dealing with lower um, order of magnitude in terms of your exponents. One last thing that I want to mention, although you don't typically run into this, especially kind of as you're beginning these things, but I do like to give you these variations. Don't forget that first, your coefficients don't have to be integers. Now, they typically will be because that's the easiest thing to work with, but your coefficients don't have to be. They can be, as you can see in this example, they can be possibly fractions. They could also be decimals. But the process of distributing is exactly the same. That will be identical. This example that we have, so I'm gonna paste this in here, is kind of ugly because of the fractions, but that shouldn't deter you from actually trying to figure out what the answer or what the distribution would be because you follow exactly the same process. So this would have been distributing across both of the terms in here and now notice that the second binomial, our x, is actually second in order instead of being first in order. That doesn't matter. We still have only two terms, and one of those terms is with an x. So here, what we have is x over 2 times the 3. So this is going to give me 3x over 2. Then it's going to be negative. Notice the x's now. So I have a half and then it's multiplying two over three. So what I will have is, so you have one half that's in front of here and it is multiplying and this will be negative two over three like that. I'm gonna get rid of these two, I'm gonna reduce it so it's just simply one over three and it's negative. So that's one over three and it is x squared because you have the x times the x. Now we're going to take the second term, so this is gonna be the one third. Now one third times three is actually just one. Don't forget that because we can do that. Three is just simply three over one. This equals to one. And then finally we can multiply it by the last one. That's gonna be negative. Now it's going to be an ugly negative. This will be two over nine and it's an X right there. We have this and it's a very ugly quadratic. Now, if you wanna kind of clean it up, we would typically like to keep the x squared as first. You can write it like this, and it would have been, so that's your first one. We can collect these two, so this one and this one. Unfortunately, because of the fact that they don't have the same denominators, we would have to make the denominators the same in order to be able to do this and we can certainly do that. We can take 18 as our common denominator between the two. Now that from two to 18, we have to multiply by nine. So three times nine is going to be 27 X minus. Now, if I'm going to change this to 18, I'm multiplying that by two and that means the top is four. So I have 27 minus the four and that's gonna be 23, and it is positive. So 23 over 18, this is x, and then finally we would have our one. That's a very ugly one that you would have, but the point of me showing you this is because you don't always have just very nice integers. You can have something else. The other and last item that I wanna to mention to you is that in school, you typically use x all the time. So all of these examples I've used x because that's typically what happens within quadratics and in school. 
but nobody says that you have to use x as a variable you can use any variable you like we could have changed any of these for example i didn't have to use x i could have used z or z right here and it wouldn't have changed anything for us it would have just simply made our variable z or z instead of the actual x that's what you would have there and you could have done that anywhere now of course both of the variables have to be uh, identical if one is for example z and then the other one is x then you no longer really have that full out quadratic because if you multiply z times x you're going to get zx and not z squared or x squared so be aware of that that's just the introduction to quadratics and I wanted to show you some of these examples and refresh you back from grade nine on how to distribute and then collect the like terms. These are all expressions that you have and you're going to be seeing this 100% in grade 10. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye everyone.